yeah. How do you manage love? As I've said this before, the mobile phone is the most commonly used device. And as a matter of fact, it really makes our life much easier. I mean, it's nearly impossible to be engaged in today's modern life without a only one. Let me answer your with another question. What do you want to know about your mobile phone? What do you know about your mobile phone? I'll let you think about it. I'll tell you what we know about mobile phones. They represent the biggest and most complex database, although there are such tiny little devices. It's quite simple. In this smartphone, a person has stored information about everything. We all take photos, everybody takes photos, of course. That's why smartphones have cameras, processing softwares, and they're increasingly efficient. We use them to take pictures of everything, of what we eat, how we dress up, who we meet, where we go, in a park, in a bathroom, in a car, meaning that all our life's moments are captured by our smartphone. We'll use our device to search for something, whether we search for a specific place where we want to go, whether we search for news or product. At some point, we need to search for something, of course. We search for everything because that's easy. It's true, it makes our life so much easier. We search for anything, we find anything. But now I come back to my question. What do you know about your mobile phone? So far, that it makes your life easier. But it makes others' life easier as well. I know you think my, my phone is locked, I have a password, I didn't press accept, nobody can access my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. But when you configure your smartphone, when you download an app, when you visit a website or you create an account, you need to approve some terms and conditions. You ever spend time to read it? In that moment, your data is theirs. Are you really aware of what type of data are you willing to share and what data is actually taken from you? The answer is simple. All of it. Exactly all of it. Where you go, how you go, with whom, when, how, absolutely everything. You offer them your past and they predict your future. How many times have you heard this? They don't know how to spy on me. I'm secured. I use W why Z software? I have nothing to hide. Stop being so paranoid. What can they do with my information? I'm just a regular guy. I just work from eight to seven. Stop, stop thinking that your data is not useful or that nobody has time to analyze it because you are not an important person. You are just an average teacher, a doctor, a philosophist. In this era of technology, Gathered information is processed by artificial intelligence. Automated devices, automated services, meaning it's analyzed, stored and labeled instantly, and then it's saved in a huge database. The access to it? Yeah, exactly, they have access to it. One click away, just like you access your mobile phone. What do you know about your mobile phone? I ask you again. For sure, it makes their life easier or their business easier. As a brief description, you are a database. You are the subject. You are the product. You are the price. They analyze you. They get to know you, to know your past, so they can predict your future. The big problem is that this database, this, call it a database, this information can be accessed by anybody. For example, search engines or social media are huge databases and you create it with your own hands. This type of databases are sold to other companies and their third-party business partners or groups of interest. Because of course nobody works for free. Information, information leakage takes place and at some point it only takes a, a weekly secure server or a little bit of negligence from the database owners, administrators, to be hacked or lost. As nothing is impossible, of course, for your information to reach 
third party's hands. You already know about the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Of course, it's been all over media. The company who influenced elections in many states, and I don't want to go deeper in this problem, I'm not a politician, but they use Facebook database. They've manipulated people, voters, using mainly the gathered information they got. So don't forget, everything is analyzed. So, what do you know about your mobile phone? I'm asking, you're asking yourself, you, you should answer yourself. You know that it represents a virtual gate to your identity. Its camera, its microphone and files can be accessed with or without your approval by anyone who got an interest in doing so. And I've said it before, it's very difficult to find a balance between security and unlimited access. We're not saying that we're perfect or our smartphone is the best on the market. No, maybe we're not. We're just trying to develop a device which in reality is an encrypted communication platform and to protect our users. That's why we're claiming privacy is the new order. It should be. This is a very good question. We don't, do you, you know that? We don't collect data. First of all, we use the blockchain technology for creating an identity. This means that the identity is generated exactly in the moment when the user configures the private key. The user is assigned a wallet ID through the blockchain. The 24 words mnemonic passphrase, the key words, are generated by the blockchain and only the user has access to them. We don't ask for information about the user's name or anything else. Secondly, the VOBP technology doesn't allow us to intercept what users communicate because we don't have the servers. It's decentralized. Each phone, each device represents a node which uses the key generated when configuring the phone for encrypting the messages, for encrypting the user details. The encryption technology is very complex as well. That's why I'm proud to say it, we placed a $1 million prize for those who can hack our devices. Because not even us can find out what two impulse devices can communicate what two impulse devices send between them. We're trying to protect our users as much as we can and to offer them the possibility of remaining private. Privacy in terms of protecting yourself against the bad guys. Our policy doesn't allow external developers to create applications, to upload them into the impulse key one system without our team to previously check their source code. This is a very important thing. However, even if we check the source code, we still can't guarantee the security of that app because it's not developed by us. We don't know what this app is willing to upload in the future. We simply don't. A third party app can release updates, malicious updates, without you, without us knowing about it. Most likely this is one of the reasons we're so picky, I would say, in choosing the pre-authorized apps in our store. And exactly as I said before, we're not multimedia oriented. We care about privacy, we care about security. The Impulse K1 is a security and privacy oriented device. Wanna buy a multimedia one? There's a free market for it. Wanna buy a secure device? We invite you, the K1 is the choice. Wanna get a million dollars? Hack it? We wait for you in Romania to hand you the price.